everybody. It's the Drive School Podcast. I am Pastor Goodman, your host, and uh, my, my good friend, Michelle Bauman, the director of Why for Life is back. How are you? I'm great. Good morning. How are you? We're doing okay. We, we got some travel in this weekend. We're set for the week, and uh, we are, uh, we're closing up the Ten Commandments as far as life yeah. issues go, aren't we? Yep. Nine and ten. Those are those are the two we're going to cover today. All about coveting, right? Right. So coveting those <clears throat> those things that are living and coveting those things that are not living. Um, the 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 um, wife, the donkey, the you know the house, the home, all those sorts of things. So so God speaks um, on both of those issues: the coveting, the non living, um, and of course that is a life issue. Um, in, in many and various ways, but in general, when we look at coveting, we think, or we recognize that we are desiring things that God hasn't given us, right? So <clears throat> our nature, our, our, um, the way that we view the world is one through discontentment. And, um, when we're discontented, we have a tendency to make decisions that maybe aren't God pleasing, right? Um, and maybe aren't even good for us or life affirming. So, so when we're thinking about when we're coveting things, um, we're, we're asking God to give us what, what he hasn't, what he hasn't deemed necessary for us at this time. And so, um, if we, we desire them enough, then we're going to to make decisions that will help us get those things right. So, so uh, we see our vocations as opportunities not to serve others, but vocations. Our vocations become something to get things right. We use them to get things for ourselves to please ourselves, which ultimately is goes back to the first commandment. First commandment issue, right? Um, and when we you know we look at coveting. Um, I like to refer to it as kind of a gateway sin, right? Mm. Um, a gateway sin in that it's it is a it's a thought, it's not an action, but it often leads to actions mm -hmm. and actions that affect our lives very deeply. Um, when we look at coveting people, the living things, um, you know, we have donkeys in there and and oxen, um, but when we think about coveting coveting someone's spouse, someone's uh, wife or the fact that they have children, um, we make people then into objects of our desire rather than recognizing them as the gifts that God intended to give. Um, and even if they weren't given to us, they have still possibly been part of our life, which also brings gifts to us um, that God intended to give us. And so, so we flip those gifts on their head and say, uh, instead of gifts, they are things that I deserve, right? They are things that, that I need. And, um, and again, that often leads us to choices then that are going to have life consequences, right? So if we're desiring things and we're desperate to get them, not only does that change our vocation, but maybe that gateway leads to stealing, um, maybe that, that, um, in, in the sense of, you know, life issues, um, you know, maybe it leads to, uh, a decision to engage in pornography or a decision to, to, um, cover a person's person so much that we engage in some sort of adulterous behavior. Um, so again, that coveting, um, in and of itself is a sin, but it, it is deeply tied or can be deeply tied to our actions too. Um, you know, even, you know, we've talked about, or we've alluded to, um, that desire for children, which is a good and godly desire, but the decisions that we make, uh, in, in getting those gifts, right. Sometimes can lead to long-term life issues like IVF, um, <clears throat> which, which does have some long-term life consequences, um, not only for the child that's conceived, but also for those children who are maybe frozen still. Um, and so, so again, yeah, the ninth and 10th commandment, we sometimes look at them and think, oh, well, they're not quite as, quite as serious as the others, but God doesn't give us things um, unless 
they're serious, right? Unless, because God wants what's best for us. He wants, he, his, his commandments are to protect the gifts that he gives us and to protect our lives and to help, um, to give us the, the perspectives and, um, and help us make the decisions that will bring joy to our life that will bring, um, you know, health in some instances, um, definitely that will be God pleasing. And so, yeah. Um, even though we often see nine and 10 as kind of a, maybe not that quite one. as bad as the others, it's, it's certainly connected. You said something really, really profound. Um, that's, when we when we covet, what we do is we take something that are good gifts from God and we start to assume that we deserve them. And when we deserve them, uh, it, it changes not only how we look at God, but how we look at the people who already have them. Uh, when when we covet, when we when we believe we deserve something, we don't have it yet. It just means everybody who does or can give it is in the way. Um, yeah. it, it means that that God is now a, a, an enemy to be overcome, and our neighbors who have these gifts aren't to be you know loved and supported, but they're in the way of us having stuff. Whenever you see somebody else is in the way of you having a thing or a person, it means that you're going to not treat them like somebody that Jesus died for, but, but as an object to be moved. Um, it, it gets dark really, really fast in the heart. And, and you're right, the hands will follow. Um, and you, you've sort of, uh, you've dodged the typical place where we talk about life issues, but I, I think it probably happens here too. If, if, if a child in the womb is in the way, of, of a life that, that you want to live. Yep. Um, if, if somebody else's spouse is in the way of the life that you think you deserve, if, if, um, if, if the work and, and the place that you have, and even the God who has given you the job are all in the way of you having the money that you think that you deserve, all of a sudden it, it becomes not only a really selfish way to live, but a, a very, very reckless and lonely way to live because now there's no other people around you. There's just, there's just people that, that need to move. Yep. I mean, God desires to give us the, these good gifts, right? God desires to fill our lives with joy. And even though we will, we will have suffering, um, you know, God desires again, to, to bring us as a good, good father would, uh, to give us these blessings. And so when we transform them into something that, that we not only can work for, but demand, um, they don't become blessings. They become, um, idols, Right. And so our vocation, you know, even our job, the money that we earn, which is which is a blessing from God that we are able to use to serve others, our family, our spouse, perhaps other people in the community. Right. Our church, um, those those gifts then become very often the means through which we use to get what we want. Right. Um, and and you're right with abortion. Um, if, if a life is something that that is in the way of our career and of the the perhaps the power we want or the items that we can get with a better job um, or the family structure we desire, then they become disposable when really God intended them as gifts that bring joy and blessing and life into our life, right? So it might be something to kind of think about, especially as we, we've walked through all 10 commandments that um, God gives these for good purpose. Um, and, and that these aren't sort of ways to sort of make life a little bit harder, but it's worth it because of, of life. But, but actually a recognition that if life is such a gift and these commandments all guard life, instead of actually butting up against somebody that God put in your life and seeing them as a wall to be broken down, you actually get to see them as a person who loves you and who you can love that this isn't supposed to make life harder, but actually a, a lot more joyous. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, again, God, God, uh, his commandments are not just do's and don'ts. They are meant to protect gifts that he wants to give. And because our God is a good God, we know those gifts are good too. And they are meant to fill our lives with goodness. And so, so even though the world would, would, uh, and, and, and our own sinful flesh <laughs> would see those gifts as, as burdens sometimes, or as um, perhaps even as things that uh, we 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 want something else. We don't necessarily want this version of the gift, right? Um, but but we, as Christians, trust that God knows best, and that God does um, does have have 
gifts in mind, plans in mind uh, to, to bless us. And we trust and we rest assured in those gifts and in those, in those, um, in those plans. So. Absolutely. Michelle, it's been a lot of fun. We're getting ready to take a summer vacation, but I know we're excited to see you at conferences this summer. Is there anything else you want to tell us about before we take off? Well, I think that's good. I, I can't wait to see everybody at, at higher things. So looking forward to it. All right. Well, thanks so much. Have a great day. Thanks to you too.